diabetic foot syndrome is an exclusively one which is managed by your physician and uh, few of the surgeons have now entered into the arena all these four five decades this predominantly physicians thing and there is no separate specialty for a diabetic foot so the amount of surgical work that is needed it is better designed and operated by surgeons Now, foot ulcerations are. You can see this cartoon. Foot ulcerations and infections are most common reasons for the patient being admitted to the hospital. Any amputation proceeds of three to four weeks of ulcer foot ulcers. Dense neuropathy leads to insensate foot, and this gentleman has a nail in situ, which is impaled into the foot. and is not aware of it see the epidemiology we have seen to uh, covid uh, epidemiology we uh, virulent now diabetes is another non infective niche which is a pandemic in proportion 25% of the diabetics develop foot ulcers 80% of plantar ulcers are trophic ulcers so 80% of traffic ulcer and they are not due to neuropathy neuro due to infection 20% of all these become deep 50% of patients with cellulitis will have another within 2 years 10 to 40% of people will require amputation if we have got an ulcer already diabetes mellitus is due to a deranged metabolism every cell functions glycosylations and organ dysfunction occurs your krebs cycle glucose and its metabolism is affected liver function drops and you have got a collagen synthesis is not present and you have a atherosclerotic block in your peripheral vessel it leads on to impaired wound healing and produces a fatal ulcer this is a very famous uh, trio what are all the causes vascular neuro sepsis described in 1909 but now the neuropathy component has come to 71% vascular about 15% neuro ischemic in 8% and mind that sepsis is the low, lowest as the genesis of a diabetic foot hyperglycemia and insulin requirement people discuss at length but very few people discuss with the foot always examine the feet exclusively there are three components which is done one is a foot pulses foot care and foot wear this is cause of fetal edema ev shunting of tissue hypoxia and jd ward has described this sign the ankle level you have multiple varicose veins the prominent lungs of venous vein people think unnecessarily it's a varicose vein it is a jd ward sign of a prominent lungs of venous vein in a microcirculatory failure that's why the main prophetic advice is to keep the foot elevated at least 5 degree or 10 degree up now this spinal cord pathways you would have forgotten which you have read in second year physiology we have posterior column involved Where the fascias, cuneatus and uh, gracilis, which affects the loss of proprioceptive sensation, touch, vibration, and joint sense. What you need to do it is 128 vibrations uh, tuning fork. That is all that is required. We don't need big, complicated investigative agent. see initially diabetics are plenty my foot attitude they never bother about the feet tissue necrosis 25% directed with ulcer complication and they lose the limb now last 30 years the people keep on talking about diabetic foot there is a mass screening early detection foot education identify the high risk foot foot care programs self management talk to the patient and limb salvage that's why amputation rate must have come down quite significantly 
no risk food, at risk food, high risk food. These are all the classification you do when you are doing an annual evaluation of health education. I'll tell you. The present pathophysiology is neuropathic, neuroischemic, triggered by 80% profit changes, producing sepsis of a minimal quantity, neutrophilic toxic arthritis, and producing diabetic foot syndrome. So, this sepsis is secondary. Don't load with antibiotics. The, uh, diabetic foot ulcer is a trophic ulcer, will not require diabetes, it will not require antibiotics. Inspect the feet, fetal edema, feel the pulse, examine the sole and sole of the footwear. That is, sole of the patient and sole of the footwear is wearing. Perform a comprehensive foot evaluation at least annually. Look for sensory loss and prior ulcerations or surgery. Should have the feet inspected every month. See, this is a little structural diagram how the foot occurs, the tibia fibula pressure lands on the talus, you have the calcaneum posteriorly, you got the ongoing metatarsals. At the level of PPX, proximal phalanx, it bends up because of peaking pressure and you have a classical uh, V-shaped deformity. And uh, you can find out about joint sense and the loss of protective sensation using a semi and nylon filament, which is 10 gram filament, that's what I described. As it bends, you should be able to appreciate. And these big authors, Delbridge, Lipsky, and uh, Bolton, they were uh, in the field for the last 30 years and they have produced thousands of papers. Infections are considered a major destroyer. But the present findings suggest peripheral vascular disease and neuropathy produce dilapidated foot. Then it is prone for sepsis and the sepsis destroys it. In chronic wound ulcer, this is very important. Measurements of chronic wound health ulcers, we have various uh, management protocols. We have a biogun for methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus, which colonize the diabetic foot ulcer which can be stimulated by a biogun. I think it's worth reading about the function of biogun, but not yet available. Minor factors, you find the keep foot exercises that prelude the diabetic foot ulcer. Small ulcers, what we call it, to describe it as grade O lesions of diabetic maggots. Cons, callosities, intrinsic minus foot, arch collapse, warm ischemic foot, small vessel disease. See, when you are studying, you would have said microangiopathy is the cause of renal disease. Microangiopathy is the cause of foot problem. So they are talking about microangiopathy as everything. It is now found the microangiopathy that occurs is microcirculatory abnormality in the foot and not to be discussed as microangiopathy. See, it is now called as microcirculatory failure. Initially, it is microangiopathy. You have uh, Small vessel disease by the radiologist and physicians calling it uh, monkey bug. No, no, no. All palpable pulses will be examined and cardiac neurological visceral symptoms are noted. And when you measure the ankle brachial index, the cuff cannot compress the artery because they are all calcified. So when the discalcification occurs, instead of 140, it goes on and shows 180. 30 to 40 degrees millimeters more. So that is falsely elevated, so it is not reliable. Skin perfusion pressure, PCO2 can be measured by toe pressure and as well as the leg. Ankle pressure at the index, brachial index is 50. The diabetic atherosclerosis, as most of the people have been calling it, it is renamed as diabetic macroangiopathy. It is like distal in nature. Normally, everything occurs at the thigh level and the iliac level. Now, this occurs at the popliteal trifurcation. It occurs in a distal end, younger patient, calcification 
present progressive disease and bilateral females versus male atherosclerotic norms are not present there is diabetic macroangiopathy so the entire classification and ulcer is based on wagner maggit classification is very important because it is easy to follow and we have various other classification from texas classification ads classification and all that we are not loading with all those things somebody can take this what exactly is the typical plantar necrosis under the head of the first metatarsal dense neuropathy patient with anti platelets oral antibiotic surface and there is no cellulitis you don't find the cellulitis there is no need for no major antibiotics typical plantar necrosis under head of first metatarsal again you see only the great toe all the rest are near normal intrinsic minus deformity i think uh, plastic surgeons are more familiar with it in the upper limb palm intrinsic minus deformity is due to small muscle fibrosis and contraction and uh, emergency wet gangrene the aim of our pause mission and prevention is less and less occurring and i think it has come down dramatically last 50 years what six is the can anybody talk on this what exactly i find energetic black they say gangrene in fact it is not in fact the entire thing is only a cellulite leading on to a skin necrosis and the skin portion clearing away so the black thing is a skin necrosed in black and rest of the tissues are normal this looks awful but within 3 4 days after complete deprivation of the skin necrosed you will find it normal a small toe gangrene is all that is required to diagnose something in the block at the external leg femoral popliteal uh, profunda femoris profunda plastic there all in the up thigh is present but you will find report they present with the toe gangrene the sequel to paranoia if not properly attended to not elevated the foot foul odor as discharge and puncture wound the diabetic infection can be dangerous can lose the toe because the two arterial supply on either side can go and necrosis 100% of lateral malleolar at some time there other in their lifetime during the diabetic period they develop an abscess they necros they come back with the bursitis malleolar bursa is very nuisance thing yeah, unless directed properly and you will find a yeah, keratin well you find the entire thing is because of put nothing happened because it is a well of normal tissues and nothing like the allowing it to heal by keratin uh, by skin level the genesis of foot also is so far you have seen uh, foot infection but the main thing is foot deformities altered weight transmission and uh, the ankle strain occurs and there is a sufficient good quality evidence to support the use of therapeutic footwear demonstrated in pressure relief by worn by patients to prevent plantar foot ulcers offloading is the best validated of all the current interventions so you should select the place of peaking of pressure and give a right shoe foot pressure is 100 to 130 square centimeters 50 to 65 kg man you have 0.5 gram kilogram at kpa so you uh, is beyond 700 it can from 50 to 700 it can wear beyond 700 it becomes uh, an ulcer which gives way the foot pressure measurements are not very often done do we practice what we preach that is what amstrong questions clinical care of diabetic foot 
theses have been considered as a gold standard by academic and consensus committees alike, but not practically done, preached, is only preaching. And people who res require amputations, a chronic ulcer in the toes or foot or in the leg and thigh level, it needs amputation in the selected cases. For individuals with an infected diabetic foot ulcer, identified as um, for predictors of amputation. The, we, want, we have designed a GS score amputation for predictive scoring. We'll tell you, amputation scoring. The standards of medical care of diabetes 2020 has been was released, and I think there is a big volume on this. Amputation versus limb salvage. The blood supply, chronic renal failure, score of sepsis, uh, x ray finding, one x ray finding, or history of ulcer. So you find all this if it is present less than 30 years. There is no um, nothing to worry, all are zero. 30 to 60 years, you have one absent post TBL and uh, mild uh, diabetic foot with sepsis, which can add to the score. You have 70 GA score, more than 75 it predicts amputation. You can tell the patient. The main thing the culprit is chronic renal failure, end stage renal disease, which contribute to the amputation. This is a very interesting thing, osteolysis. Here. On the right, you'll find the central descent and produce a fat food. But more important is osteolysis, where you don't find, you've got a marker. Yes. You find this. This looks like all the plateau is gone, but uh, you find the entire matrix available over on which the calcification completely reoccurs and normal toe for cosmetic purposes is preserved. See, we saw the arch collapse. You find subcutaneous air shadows. Subcutaneous air shadows are present in cellulitis. You can see the presence of air shadow. This is quite often asked in the exam. You such a length of monkey bark is not normally seen. You find this particular person having a monkey bark calcification, the median median sclerosis, and you find the intima is perfectly all right, the adventitia is all right, only the media is calcified. So it's a conduit, bamboo candidate conduit for which the blood can flow. But it is very difficult to believe that that flows through that. Short cut arthropathy, then condition called as osteopenia, then deformities like hammer toes, they are very common because of arthropathy. Radiological findings, osteolysis, we have said, penciling of metatarsals. You have the penciling of metatarsal. You can see this completely. And you find vessel and mater deformities, which is kind of normally present in a diabetic foot ulcer. Vessel and mater deformities. You can see it here. The diagnostic of foot problems. Value of MRI. MRI has been found useful in osteomyelitis, charcot's abscess, all that. 1991, our department published 
a paper in diabetes care our work on topical phenytoin and diabetic foot ulcer was published with the diabetic care it has been found to be useful and that article was the top 100 papers published from indian uh, indian surgical literature in the uh, foreign journals and uh, queries and all that right patient awareness book is important and uh, there is another book in tamil which uh, authored and we have our padam health news site where we have all of the father and the diabetic foot awareness practical management of diabetic foot will pass to it but educate evaluate management individualized very important all this classification scoring system all that are important but when it comes to patient care it is individualized evaluate every point like in investigation or clinical findings educate the patient and aggressive and conservative line pathway you go in the mid pathway half loading wound modern wound healing age methods are plenty and don't think that because it is modern it is working most of the time it is as good or as bad as the normal treatment maltreated ulcers minimize antibiotic usage microbiological control very important ulcer collection mice wound you need to collection of stuff and all this debridement novel wound healing antibiotics topical nothing to be applied topical plaster reconstructions and perfusions elevation of foot and foot surgery maybe vascular reconstruction or amputation the novel things which have been in the market are medical hyperspectral technology advanced mice wound therapy hydrogels and alginates bioengineered tissues skin substitutes platelet and uh, growth factors electrical stimulation negative pressure wound therapy duplex scan of the femoral artery and the popliteal artery is all that is required there is no need for an angio hyperglycemia hypertension dyslipidemia and for a moment you become a surgeon a physician because it's very difficult to be a physician altered coagulation and fibrinolysis good glycemic control starting treatment for cardiovascular risk Uh, treatment of hypertension and uh, reduce the uh, anti-platelet iotoiliac and iotobibumeral procedures critical ischemia and you improve the circulation to the both the lower limbs and more important the surgeon's job is lifestyle modification exercise rehabilitation and vascular surgery if it is required to operate and the entire wound management has to be done by a single person who has been doing it or every day he has to have a good progress written about the wound ulcers so lifestyle modification exercise rehabilitation it is our motto is stop smoking and keep walking that's the surgical motto acute cellulitis you always look at the plantar side and also look look at the leg you have the red the line demarcation is seen if you left and treated these are the people who in the have a streptococcal uh, pulmonary dysfunction similarly you found whether it is bypass versus angioplasty in severe ischemia of the leg uh, has been studied but both are equally effective but because it is smaller vessels the results of bypass are poorer in the lower limb below the knee i have authored another textbook on diabetic foot syndrome which tells you about all the 
principles and the management protocols of diabetic food. We have started an initiative dedicated to the amputation prevention and improving food care in the community. The newspaper has been circulating. And the main idea is a yeah, newspaper to educate everybody who are particularly diabetic. So educate the person on diabetic food. They are educate and educate again. Total contact testing, dermograph, graph jacket, apigraph, regnarex, they are all useful but very expensive. Like limb threatening or life threatening. Foot sepsis starts from the web space and the nail bed. Candida infections and foot care not done properly. Trophic ulcers producing healing and all can be made to heal. Diabetic foot ulcer is often not a non-healing ulcer but it is a maltreated ulcer. Pouring bottles of betadine, covidone iodine onto the wound doesn't help. If you are going to wash it, wash it with saline. Anything your face tolerates, put it in the food. Never put something like spirit, covidone iodine, Vipirocin, only Vipirocin is the exception, they are two limited quantities, not much. Bacterial swap culture, somebody was discussing with me about where do stem specimens for bacterial swap culture, do they do all the uh, resistance and uh, culture positivity and all that. Mainly useful in septicemia, persistent sepsis, graft set and amputation site flora, SSG preparation or a biopsy with bacterial swab for deep seated infection like osteomyelitis. Protein CS in all infection is not necessary. Absolutely it is not required for a supervisual ulcers or usually normally you find a bacteria, it can be a commensal, it can be a contaminant, it can be a coexistent, it can colonize all this but not the causative agent. Another C is see, proper debridement is important. Debridement by megat has been described, but the smaller this thing are tackled by surgical uh, debridement. While you have megats and all that for a higher chronically non healing ulcers. Skin cover and timings, you should put it in the proper site and proper place and then it heals well. Knowledge of food changes are always present and always be aware of it, but the practice of food care is not translated into practice, that is very important. The, it is something like wearing a mask in the community. Knowledge of wearing a mask is known, but practice of mask the wearing is not done. Diabetic foot and leg amputations are preventable. They walk home. Health education is important. If it is not properly taken, you will have amputations and then the patient is confined to your wheelchair. So, thank you. Thank you, sir, for uh, such a nice uh, and illustrative lecture on diabetic foot. Uh, and uh, you seem to have done uh, a lot of original work and written papers and published uh, books. So we, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, the students should be much aware of any any questions from the audience, please. So, Professor Kumar, Mahabhadra. Any any questions, please? Now, actually, now if it seems that there are some uh, podiatric specialists that come up, there are three, four institutions in the country where they are specially training uh, um, podiatrics. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. there are a lot of people here. In fact, the Diabetic Food Society is functioning well. We have Ramesh. Uh, in, I think Ramesh is in Karnataka. We have Bell in Maharashtra. 
a lot of people are interested now and uh, applying their mind into this important topic now is it that uh, the diabetic foot ulcers incidents have come down now than during your times possibly yes because the awareness is better now the oh. foot ulcers and gangrene are much talked about by the um, healthcare workers in the community and in fact i had a telemedicine conversation with uh, somebody in tangachi madam in south down south kanyakumari oh. and i found uh, the person in telemedicine asked all about neuropathy and the changes of antibiotics to be used in the foot ulcers oh. i was amazed Uh, so there is a question uh, from Raksha who asks: There are so few books mention metatarsal head resection for trophic ulcer. How does it help? Now books have definitely described, but the genesis. In fact, you have to fix, uh, anchor the metatarsal to the first uh, proximal phalanx. But uh, it's a foreign body, and uh, surgical fixation without a foreign body doesn't work. It gives way. Okay. And if they're obese, you will definitely abuse it. So, uh, uh, what is the choice of antibiotics in infected uh, uh, diabetic culture if culture is negative? See, the first thing is, yeah, uh, uh, non. I mean, the antibiotics. Um, I'm sorry, good gram-positive. Amoxicillin with. Clavulanic acid, a good gram-positive antibiotic is all that is required orally. And if there is an a- action uh, of antibiotic onto the thing, it takes about 48 hours. If it doesn't respond, if the situation worsens, you can think in terms of other things. If the culture is negative, it doesn't uh, make much sense because uh, the wound is important to the culture. uh what should the ideal dressing technique to follow for residents in diabetic foot ulcers the principle is moisture maintained and uh, all sloughs all foreign bodies all gangrenous tissues must be excised minimal excision it has to be done in the bedside it need not be taken to the theater it has to be done in bedside and excision can be done and if the patient is having fever you use your schedule in the evening because if you see the patient in the morning you have fever you, the debridement is not done with the fever okay so any more questions from the audience verbal questions please come up sir so there are no questions thank you sir again thank for you. a nice lecture on a saturday evening and we shall see you again next week next thank week. you thanks for your time sir thank you